Hello everybody, today we are going to continue work towards our Guardian Farm preparation. In the last video we built this cave spider spawner system and at the end of the last video, because of bugs, it wasn't working. The spawner just wasn't spitting out spiders. This is because 1.18.2 is totally broken. Now we are currently still on 1.18.2, but for whatever reason today logging in, this thing is absolutely chugging out spiders, which is fantastic, so I really probably should turn on the trident killer and start start mincing these things up and holding my looting sword so that we can start getting lots and lots of spider eyes. Now the reason we want spider eyes is we want harming potions because our guardian farm is going to rely on us throwing harming potions at the guardians to kill them to get lots and lots of tasty XP. The other ingredient we need though is fermented spider eyes. We need spider eyes and fermented spider eyes which means we need a whole load of brown mushrooms and sugar. So brown mushrooms. I thought I had brown mushrooms and I've looked in all of my boxes, I've looked through all of my ender chests and I can't find any brown mushrooms, which means I need to go and find one. And the easiest place to find brown mushrooms is probably in the nether, which is quite fortunate because I actually need to go to the nether to restock my shops and buy some things. Now, of course, my moss shop isn't doing particularly well in terms of sales. We have made so far a total of one diamond from it. However, my other shop is doing pretty well. However, another slight problem with this, though, is we are selling a reasonable amount of iron, and I'm just about run out of iron, so I do need to get some AFK time over at the iron farm soon. And there we go. We got 24 diamonds from that, and that is everything except for the iron restocked. I really do need to get that AFK time in because I've got hardly any left. Anyway, onwards and upwards to the shopping area. Now, this is apparently was asking for arrows. Now, we got loads of arrows from the mob farm. I've actually th thrown most of them into lava, so I can't really help with that one. But the thing I'm here for more than anything else is not flying cows with crowns on it is actually golden carrots three stags per diamond this is ridiculous i have brought shulker box i will have many 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 mr beardstone and there we go mr beardstone is now completely out of stock of golden carrots we have two shulker boxes of them i probably only need one shulker box and if i only need one shulker box of golden carrots and i have two shulker boxes of golden carrots the sensible thing to do here would be to sell the additional shulker box of golden carrots at a discount so there we go special offer two stacks of one diamond and i've put them all in there and uh, i think i could make some good money here this is this is good news get my money back the other place i wanted to come is i wanted to check the this out this is called the u store and basically what you do is you can put up like jobs that you want to be done and you can also well, apparently there's vaults i didn't know about that but yeah you can like sell stuff here as well so for here for instance mr beardstone is selling all sorts of junk which no one's ever going to want because it's just you know total junk and uh, over here, Zap is selling nothing at all. Tiz has got a mailbox, apparently, so is Mr. Beardstone. Gruber's selling beacons at 12 diamonds each. Oh, geez, sorry, I made a mistake. It turns out Gruber's not selling any beacons for 12 diamond each, but I just happen to be selling beacons for 16 diamonds each. So, uh, you know, that's good news. This is all lovely, very nice. So we got a lovely place here. Piggy's got lots of wood. Oh, wood, a stack of diamond. Oh, he's got lots of... Di oh, no, no, I don't need... I do need it, but no, I'm not playing that game. We've done making two new shops, <laughs> and now I need to go and find myself a nice, tasty brown mushroom. And I'm pretty sure I won't have to travel very far. Ow, watch out. Excuse me, sir. You haven't happened to see... Oh, my goodness, how rude. I was talking to you. I know you're missing an ear, but geez, that's just rude. Ah, there we go. Brown mushrooms. Told you I wouldn't have to go very far at all. Now, obviously, I could have gone to a roofed forest biome and cut down a giant mushroom. And there is a roofed forest biome right between my base and the Guardian farm. However, the nether's obviously easier because it's less death and, you know, what could go wrong? Everything's fine. It's all good. Right, let's go gather many, many mushrooms. Now, in order to chop many, many, many brown mushrooms, I am going to need a temporary area to work in because I want to make a very quick, simple and dirty brown mushroom farm. It won't be totally automatic. It will still be semi-manual, but it'll certainly make our lives a lot easier. But I'm going to need a bit of space to put it in. Are you chunk aligning it? Nope, don't need chunk aligning this one. Oh, that's good then. It is very good. Should you chunk align it anyway? No, I don't need to chunk align everything. Is it the most efficient brown mushroom? Oh my goodness me, shut up. Now, I haven't made a brown mushroom farm in a very long time, so there's a good chance that this won't work, but here is the plan. We have a bowl full of water, a podzol block with a brown mushroom on it, a dispenser with, well, bone meal in it, 
and an observer in front of a sticky piston, and underneath all of that, there's another observer facing the other way, so that when I flick that lever, that will start bone mealing, and we will grow a large brown mushroom. Then all I gotta do is chop it down. And if I can chop it down with fortune, which I don't have on this, then I will get even more brown mushrooms. And the good news is here that either the brown mushrooms will end up in my inventory, which is absolutely fine, or they'll end up down in this chest over here where I can collect them. And all I need to do then is have at least one on my hotbar so I can plant another one, that'll grow. And I just chop them down for a while. Easy, right? Now here's a question, how is a hoe at getting mushroom blocks. It's not very good. I mean, it, it works, but it's not very good. Yeah, we can you even get Fortune 3 on an axe? I think you can. Okay, enchanting table, please be my best friend. I have for you a whole bunch of books. All I need is Fortune 3. Fortune 3 would be that. That's not Fortune 3. That's Fortune 2. Close. If I get another Fortune 2, I'll be happy. That's not Fortune 3. That's not Fortune 3. It's also not Fortune 3. Not Fortune 3. Not Fortune 3. Not Fortune 3. Not even close. That's probably the worst book I've ever seen in my life. Well, most of those are a complete bust. I did get one Unbreaking 3 book, which I'm going to keep. But otherwise... That's pretty much useless. Aha, we have another Fortune 2 book. This is good. Let's combine these books on here. I don't want all of those things. Should we do it the other way around and get less? Ugh, six, jeez. Five, fine, whatever. And let's see if I can actually put that on my axe. Now doing that, I've got sharpness four, efficiency five, mending one and breaking three. This is gonna give it all of those things. Plus Fortune 3, this is excellent news. And I broke my anvil, of course I did. Okay, fancy axe, you are up. Fortune three me many, many, many mushrooms. This is good. Oh, look at that. Smash that to bits in seconds. Give me more. There we go. Another giant mushroom ready to be harvested. Oh, this is amazing. I'm going to have so much brown mushroom in no time. This, of course, works with silk touch as well and red mushrooms. So you can get yourself a whole bunch of mushroom blocks doing this this way if you, you know, wanted to. But for me, I just need those little brown mushrooms in order to make the fermented spider rise. Okay, so there is one minor flaw with this design, and that is sometimes you get brown mushrooms going down the piston arm down there. So I'm just going to put a slab there, potentially. There we go. And that should stop that from happening. Yes, that means we'll get the occasional bit of mushroom stuck on here, but that's absolutely fine because I can pick those up. And as you can see, I've already got a whole bunch of mushrooms. Okay, we now have over nine stacks of brown mushrooms, which might not seem like many, but when you consider how many potions that's going to make, it's absolutely ridiculous. Let's do the maths. Okay, I have nine stacks of mushrooms. That means I have 576 brown mushrooms. That equals 576 fermented spider eyes. Each one of those will create three potions, which is 1,728 potions. And if we try and squeeze all of those into individual chests, that is 64 chests of potions. I think that's plenty. So now all we need is nine stacks of sugar, which really isn't going to be that difficult to get at all from my amazing sugar cane machine. There we go, nine stacks of sugar. And now all I need is 18 stacks of spider eyes. Well, there's one. It's a good start. And before we head over to the spider spawner, let's go and double check how many we've got at our actual mob farm, because that does produce a few. Not bad, not bad. We've got one, two, three, four, five and a bit stacks there. We've got 18 in this random junk chest in my, you know, my old storage room. So that's good. And there's another stack and one in my mob drop box. So that's good news, which takes us already up to a grand total of six and a half stacks. And just to recap, we need 18 stacks, which means I only need another 12 stacks worth of spider eyes. And heading back to my amazing spider spawner that has got my AFK account here with the looting sword. And I can see it's totally broken. Great. How long has this not... Oh, jeez. How long has that not been working for? And how did the spiders get out? And where's the tri... And why are you not on the inside? Uh -oh. And where's the hopper minecart gone? Oh, jeez. Oh, no. It's all gone wrong, hasn't it? Of course it has. Why would it work out well for me? It wouldn't, would it? I cannot hear a trident inside that machine, which means the trident has fallen through the blocks somehow. Oh, there it is, look. 
Oh jeez, can I can I grab it? There we go. Oh jeez, stupid stupid machine. Well, I can pretty much guarantee at this point we're not going to have all of the spider eyes we need. And I see you, cave spider, sitting inside of that piston there. Don't even think about it. Right, let's have a look in the box. Obviously, nothing in that one because it's filtering down into there. And we have one, two, three, four. And that's what pretty much exactly what we had when I left. So my AFK account has been here all that time. I did have to re-log them out a few times because the spawner stopped working again, which it looks like it may have done now. And obviously, that meant that the trident somehow disappeared, killed the hopper minecart, and allowed the spiders to spit out all over the floor. Hopefully, when we finally update Trudy Bedrock to the latest version, 1.18.10.04, then we will have no more issues with these stupid spawners. For now, though, I think my AFK account should log out, or maybe go over to the iron farm that's a bit more reliable, and I think we should look at some potion brewing designs. If you are enjoying this video and you are interested in seeing how this Guardian farm progresses, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out because those videos are going to be coming very, very soon. Before we get stuck into looking at different designs for automatic potion brewers, I just want to start by saying I like to come up with my own designs for things. I know there are a million tutorials and designs out there on the internet, but I'm not interested in those. I want to come up with something of my own. A very, very long time ago, I started working on designs for potion brewing stands, trying to find a way to make it completely automatic. And to be honest with you, it was a bit of a headache. I tried to make one wide tileable things. I tried to make fully automatic things. I tried to make fit piston feed tape things. And while some of them kind of worked, there was always some reason why it wasn't ideal. Take the piston feed tape idea, for example. If you get one ingredient in the wrong place, the entire thing is ruined, and then you have to smash it all to bits to start again because there's no easy way to clear it out which is just a headache, really, especially if you're doing this in survival. And, you know, there are different ways of doing this. I tried all sorts, and some of them worked, and some of them didn't. Some of them were okay, and some of them weren't. Now, I have obviously seen online, and there are quite a few one-wide, tileable, automatic, instant dispensers, where you would have your potions brewed ready to go. You'd press a button, it would activate the system, and then it would spit out just three potions. Now that's great, but I want this to run permanently. I want potions permanently being brewed and we're only brewing one type of potion. And when I say permanently, I mean, well, so that there is always supply. So this is what I've come up with, which is kind of a bit of a mix of two systems. We have the button press system where, well, basically, if I press that, it will engage the system, it will brew three potions, and then it will stop. But I've also wired in this horrendous redstone spaghetti into this so that it will just continue brewing them until this barrel is completely full. When that barrel is full, a comparator will lock this etho hopper clock, which is just happened to be timed to be the exact right amount of time for this entire thing to brew one set of potions. And once you take items out of that barrel, it will kick in again. It will empty that, putting more in the barrel, and then it will start brewing more potions. So this system is only using four ingredients. It's not adding glowstone in, which means we're only getting the initial strength of harming. If we add glowstone in there, we'll get these twice as powerful. But I don't think we need that because we can do a bit of damage to the Guardians before we throw the potions at them with fall damage. And we'll look at that in a minute. And it all works rather nicely. Let me demonstrate. First of all, I'm going to empty the whole lot out. Then I'm going to flick it on. We're going to look at this. And I'm going to speed up the game by about 20 times. We go Awkward Potion, Poison, Harming, Splash Potions. And it just repeats again and again and again. Nice and easily. We've got plenty of Blaze Powder in there because we've got a Shulker Box with the Blaze Powder coming in. And this will just go on and on and on until this chest is completely full. And where we go, the chest is now full, which means we have that redstone activated there, locking the Etho Hopper Clock, which means we get another set of Splash Potion Harmins in our hopper there. We've got three there ready to go. So when we activate the system again by taking some out, then the ones from there will drop in and we'll get a whole new bunch being brewed in there. 
So now we know how that all works, that's going to be relatively easy to build on Truly Bedrock, but there's no point in building it yet because it needs to live at the Guardian Farm, and we haven't built that yet. So we'll get to that another time. Right now, though, what I want to do is figure out exactly how far Guardians need to drop to take enough damage for just one of these to kill them. So I'm going to grab a command block and I'm going to put it down and in the command I'm going to put summon guardian and I want it to be a block away from where this command block is and I want it to be about, I don't know, 30 blocks in the air from where this command block is. And let's give that a try and see what happens when we summon a guardian. I'm going to grab a button, press the button and you'll see it falls out of the sky. It's not dead, but will that kill it? It will. So 30 blocks is far enough. Let's see if we can get away with less blocks and let's also see if we can trap these things in so they're not bouncing all over the world. Okay, I've been doing a little bit of jiggery pokery with dropping guardians down a tube trying to figure out where I can put lava as low down as possible to have the distance that they fall as short as possible so that they will still die from a single splash potion of harming and I get the XP and they can't target me in survival. And I think I've come up with a decent solution. Now, I don't actually think I need that stair block at all there. At the moment, I've got the lava 16 blocks up in the air. If I summon in the guardians and I go into survival, I wait for them to stop burning once they've fallen. And you'll see that they're not targeting me. They can't target me at all. And if I throw that splash potion down onto there, I don't take any damage. And only one survived. One survived. But geez, you see all the XP I got. Now, frustratingly, that didn't work reliably at 16 blocks in the air, but putting the lava at 17 blocks in the air does seem to make this very reliable. So again, dropping guardians down through the lava that's 17 blocks in the air, waiting for them all to finish setting on fire. I'm going to stand back so I can just see the outline of that block over there, throw the potion, and they will all die, and I will get all of the XP. And I know I wasn't in survival then, but, you know, that worked. So good news, we know how long we need to make the drop to damage them, we know how to make an automatic potion brewing system. I guess all that's left now is to start working on the actual Guardian farm, oh jeez. Did you know that you can download my skin packs from the Minecraft Marketplace? If you go to the Marketplace and search for Foxy No Tail, you will see that I've made two brand new skin packs with a whole bunch of skins from my videos, from my early videos, and Volume 2 has got some from my slightly later on than that videos, and there will be a Volume 3 coming out very, very soon. You can download these from the Marketplace, they're 310 Minecraft coins each and you get a whole bunch of skins in each pack and with that cheeky plug aside i would just like to ask did you enjoy today's video i know it's a lot shorter than normal and i know there's been no music apart from the intro music but i am testing things at my end and i'd really appreciate a little note in the comments from you if you enjoyed it or if you didn't or you know why you didn't or did like it compared to the normal videos it's all really useful information for me and it will help make my videos better for you in the future. Now, unfortunately, that is all I've got time for today. I hope you did enjoy this one. And if you did, please do leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more because in the next one, we're going to be starting work on the Guardian Farm. See you all later. Goodbye.